Hi, in this video I will discuss the charging and discharging of capacitors. As we've discussed previously, when we connect an empty capacitor to a battery, the electrons will flow from the negative terminal of the battery to one plate of the capacitor. Electrons on the other plate of the capacitor will flow to the positive terminal of the battery. This leaves the first plate with a negative charge and the second plate with a positive charge. Now, as the electrons build up on the negative terminal, it gets harder for other electrons to join them due to their electrostatic repulsion. The rate at which this charge is transferred decreases over time until eventually the potential difference across the capacitor matches the potential difference across the battery and no further current can flow. Let's look at this in terms of some graphs. Here we have the charging curves for charge against time, current against time and potential difference against time for a charging capacitor. As you can see, the charge on the capacitor increases as it's being charged, which makes sense. But the rate of that increase decreases over time as it becomes harder and harder to get more electrons to gather on the capacitor's plates. This is also represented by the current decreasing over time. At the beginning, the current is at a maximum as it is easy for electrons to move onto the capacitor. But over time, that gets more difficult and the current decays towards zero. The potential difference of the capacitor increases over time as the charges build up but again reaches a maximum once no more charge will fit on the capacitor. Let's disconnect the battery and put a resistor into the circuit instead. This will result in the capacitor discharging through the resistor. At first there is a big potential difference due to the difference in charge between the two plates. This means that a large current will flow. Over time the charge on the capacitors will decrease reducing the potential difference and therefore the current. Eventually the capacitor plates will lose their charge altogether and the current will stop flowing. What can we determine from these graphs? Well the gradient of a charge time graph is current because current equals charge divided by time. Similarly the area of a current time graph represents the charge. The y-intercept on each of these graphs represents the initial value of potential difference current and charge. Whenever we're dealing with exponential curves, whether for capacitor discharge or for radioactive decay, for example, an important quantity is the time constant. For a discharging capacitor, this would be defined as the time for the charge, voltage or current to fall to 1 over E of its original value. The higher the value of the time constant, the longer it takes the capacitor to discharge. 1 over E is equal to 0 0.37. So the time constant is the time it takes to get to 37% of the original value, whether that be the charge, the current, or the voltage. You may also see the time constant with the symbol tau. For capacitor circuits, the time constant can be calculated by multiplying the capacitance of the capacitor by the resistance of the resistor through which it is discharging. So the time constant is equal to RC. You may have previously come across a similar concept called half-life. This is the time it takes for the charge, voltage or current to fall to 50% of their original value. This is related to the time constant by half-life is equal to log 2 multiplied by RC, which is equal to 0.69 RC. So how long does a capacitor take to discharge? Well, since exponential decays never truly reach zero, it's not possible for us to calculate this. So instead, we typically say that a capacitor is fully discharged when five time constants have passed, five RC. Similarly, for charging capacitors, we say that one is effectively fully charged after five RC or five time constants. But why five time constants? Well, 0 0.37 to the power of five multiplied by RC is equal to 0.0069 RC. So after five time constants, only 0.69% of the charge is remaining. So it is, for all practical purposes, empty. Finally, let's talk about how to calculate the charge, voltage or current in a charging or discharging capacitor at a particular time. To calculate the charge at a given time for a discharging capacitor, we use the equation Q equals Q0 e to the power of minus T divided by RC. 
where Q0 is the initial charge, RC is the time constant, and T is the time that we're interested in. You'll see this format of equation in other topics, including to represent radioactive decay. By replacing the Q's with V's or I's, we can also calculate potential difference and current at any time. The equation for capacitor charging is a little different. Q equals Q0 multiplied by 1 minus E to the power of minus T over RC. Let's finish with an example. A 2200 microfarad capacitor is charged to a potential difference of 9 volts, then discharged through a 100 kilo ohm resistor through this circuit. Calculate A, the initial charge, Q0, B, the time constant of the circuit, C, the potential difference after one time constant, and D, the potential difference after 300 seconds. So to start with, we can find Q0 using the capacitor equation, Q equals CV, using the initial voltage. So substituting our numbers in, 2200 times 10 to the minus 6 multiplied by 9, we get 2 times 10 to the minus 2 coulombs. Part B, the time constant, well that's simply calculated by multiplying R and C together, and that gives us 220 seconds. Part C, let's find V after one time constant. So in this case, T is going to be equal to RC. So the equation becomes V equals V0 to the power of minus one, or nine times 0 0.37, which gives us 3.3 volts. And finally, after 300 seconds, 2.3 volts.